Okay. Yeah, uh, before to start, I want to comment to you um, because, of course, it's something that is very interesting. Uh, in order to install the virtual M, of course, you need the you need to install the virtual M to use the virtual M. So, <laughs> so yeah, we you have different option to install uh, the virtual M, the easy way. If you have Python installed, so directly use uh, Python three with this uh, this command. So it's uh, the easy way to to install uh, the Python environment. And if you probably you have uh, installed Python as well, you can directly check if you have a virtual M support in Python three. So just studying and testing Python three minus M, the virtual M and the name of the environment. So this is that way. Another way to install this option is uh, this uh, virtual M is to install with the APT or the Homebrew or whatever. And many of the package manager to install directly this kind of, of tools. So um, I realized that uh, yesterday testing different things and try to break the system. Uh, I realized that uh, it's not compatible to use for me in this case in virtual in my Mac in M1. Uh, to install to have a virtual M as a virtual M command and Python 3 virtual M. I don't know why, but uh, I have to, in to install to uninstall one of them and then it works. But uh, okay, so it's you have to take into account that. So in order to install things, so you need this in base installation ready. But uh, anyway, if you have uh, some problem installing these things, so let me know. So yeah, just to confirm, two ways to install is on that. This is the, the, the direct way to install in Windows and in Linux. Um, the other option is to install a virtual M in another with uh, with ABD, for instance. Okay, I have an instruction here. Yeah, let me check. Yeah, this is another option. So if you have a, depending on if you are in Mac or in Linux or whatever, I'm using this option because in this machine I'm using Linux uh, with uh, in specifically Ubuntu. So just apt-get install Python 3 virtual M and I can, with this command, I can use virtual M. So as you can see here, okay, virtual M, okay. The other way to install that and to test this is to use Python X minus M and the other way. So this is basically the same. So, okay, so question, things to comment to now. Okay, so we can continue. And in this moment we have a, the, um, we have the virtual M ready. As you can see, we have all the dependencies here, we list here are all the dependencies that we have and with the version, and now it's time to, to run our pipeline. So in this way, I'm going to create the, the I, I can clone the, the repository, but tomorrow Javier probably give you a more, a more, more introduction on, on that, but just to copy the code that I have here. Just copy. And save in this this box. Run the file. Okay. Okay, and yes, I'm going to to test it before just to confirm that I have a notebook folder ready. Okay, without things. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to run. So if everything is working, so no problems. Let me check. Okay. So the the pipeline is executed. So we have the outputs in the folder that I defined in my in my uh, run.py. Sorry, it's output. Okay, and you can see here all the filters, the original uh, transcription, transcription of the FITS file to a PNG, 
each individual filter and then the mosaic here okay so yeah this is the output of my of my pipeline it's working with the leverage and the package that i create with the with the requirement with requirement fix that we maintain the version specific for this uh, uh, pipeline and the requirement without version that is not a, it's not a good practice to have a just uh, the package without uh, um, a version so in that point if we want to send this uh, pipeline to our colleagues we just need to send let me check yeah we have we can create a repository and we can add uh, our ram dot pi and our requirement fix and then of course write a, a documentation or a documentation to say to run this pipeline you need to install uh, python environments install this requirement and run the pipeline to produce this result and that's all the pipeline works perfectly with just four lines okay okay this is the point we finished the, the the python virtual environment and now we are going to move to the next environment to to to, to have a, a reproducibility um, uh, workflows and pipelines with conda in order to have all the package ready okay the installation of uh, conda i mean conda is very very easy so and they have a installation for all the system linux max and, and, and windows so I previously installed uh, Conda, Mini Conda. So it's just, as you can see here, it's just to download it, this auto, um, auto executable file that is more or less uh, 100 uh, megabytes and then install with this option. Okay. And then we remove because, because it's a bit uh, equal. It's, it says 100 megabytes or something like that. Okay. So yeah, the next point, well, because the first part is to install Miniconda and the second part is to install Mamba, as I commented before. Mamba is a, it's a, it's a way to, to, to solve one of the problems of uh, Conda, that is the deficiency and the dependency uh, solving. So Mamba is solving this, this gap that have a uh, Conda, so are complementary tools. Um, yes, the installation is very easy. Once we install conda and then we install mamba on top of conda okay it's mamba conda mini conda anaconda so probably you know a lot of terms related to conda but basically all are the same the idea with conda is to create an isolated environment very very uh, friendly uh, where we can install different packages from python as well another another language like uh, julia scala r etc Okay. Okay. So the first things, the first thing I'm, that I I want to do is to create the conda environment, one conda environment. Uh, remember here that uh, we have uh, in this session one folder. I have a SK school that this is the environment that I created before with Python environment, and we can remove directly this environment, just uh, deleting this this environment. But previous, but before we have to deactivate this uh, this environment so in this moment we are in the base system so in in this moment we can remove if if we don't need uh, uh, this uh, sk school environment so we can remove it and that's perfect so with conda uh, we have another way to store all our environments when i say mamba conda is for me the same so i'm using it as well you can mix Mamba and Conda command is uh, working with the same same uh, um, arguments. I'm going to create this uh, this environment. So the syntax is very easy. Mamba create the name of the, the environment and then the version that you want to use. Okay, with Mamba as well with the uh, Python uh, Python virtual environment, you can create a, a specific environment for different Python version, three dot eight, nine, ten six, seven, whatever, okay? In this case, I'm going to create this environment for the SK school with Python 3, okay? Now I'm installing. 
Okay. In this moment, is since the base conda environment is selling uh, around 20 package ID. So we install this package, all these things. Okay. And in this moment, okay, it, it it's creates this environment. I'm going to activate. So it, take into account the difference. We then we are using source activate our environment. And here is Mamba or Conda, Mamba activate SK school or whatever. So we are going to activate. And now it's the same procedure. You can see here the Mamba uh, environment created with this, with this name, okay? We can check, we can select, and we can find different Mamba environments. For instance, Mamba and list. You can see that the way to store and to manage the Conda environment, an environment in the, with this package tool, is using Mamba, and you can see the environment that we are creating. With virtual Python virtual environment, you have this environment in a folder, okay? But in Conda, we have a better way to, well, not better, but different way to, to check and to manage that. You can check the catalog of environment and you can use it and commute between them, okay? As well, we can create another environment, just playing or just adding another. In this case, I'm going to deactivate. Okay, and I'm going, for instance, I'm going to create another Mamba environment for the Python 3.9. No, well, I think that is not, uh, okay. Uh, oh, well, yes, of course. I'm trying to activate uh, another uh, environment that uh, I didn't create, so it's perfectly normal. Yeah, I'm going to create that one with uh, Python 9. Okay, and here I have a 20 package and I add it. Okay, and now I'm going to check the number of Conda environment ready. So I name base, you can see here the asterisk in the star here. So I name the base, the regular, and I added one more here, you can see, okay. Okay, so I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to activate uh, the first one, the, the second one in this list, three nine, three eights, right? Okay. Okay, once, uh, if, for instance, probably when the first time that you are using Mamba, or Conda in this case, and when you activate or you want to activate a, a environment, probably Conda say, okay, I need to init Mamba system. So you have to, to do this, uh, you have to type this command just one, uh, one, one time, okay? The first time when you initialize the first environment. Once you, you start this initialization, you have, you have not to do, you have not um, type this, okay? Okay, so yeah, as you can see here, if I can check the version of Python that I have installed, so just to confirm. Yeah, it's the version that I have uh, in the list of uh, Python environment. With Conda list, uh, I can check what is the the package that I have installed in this environment. This is the original or the default environment without anything. So I didn't add package, but uh, Conda needs a basic system in order to work, okay? So yeah, in, in this moment, we can install uh, different things. For instance, I'm going to install. We have two different options to install. We can use pip as usual, but we can combine with Mamba. So for instance, if I use Mamba to install matplotlib, it's basically the same that we are using with pip, but the difference is Mamba is maintaining a catalog of uh, most of the repositories ready to be used and without any issues uh, about dependencies. So 
you can use whatever you want, but uh, if you are using Mamba installation of, of package used by using Mamba, just to confirm that you are using a specific version and that they these these uh, libraries are this package are maintained by by my Mamba. Okay, I'm going to add Matplotlib. You can see here, this is a uh, 22 megabytes, not so, not too much. And as you can see, to, in order to resolve Matplotlib, it is installing as well NumPy and another additional, okay. If I'm going to install NumPy, I say that it's installed, okay. All the request package already, solve okay uh, another interesting thing it says uh, you can install as well pip in mamba so it's a very yeah so you can install whatever you want because you are installing a a, a package manager that, that can install different packages as well tools in this case you can install as well pip inside mamba we can install as well things with pip if you but pip is by default installed with Mamba, so you can install pip. For instance, uh, in this case, I'm going to, to add AstroPy with pip, okay? And now I'm going to show you one thing, okay? AstroPy is installed, and now we are going to check with Conda list what are the, 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 the package that I installed until now. You can see a lot of packages, and we installed just two packages, but you need a lot of dependencies. This is probably a problem in the future, <laughs> but uh, you can see AstroPy, this is the latest version, but take into account that, the channel. So the channel is, where is the, the data, the, the, the source of this package? Without channel, this is uh, the, the base channel from, uh, from uh, Conda and and this, this channel is uh, the Python package manager. So as you can see here, we are mixing different sources, different package from different sources, and we are collecting in one place. So it is something that is very interesting to get the different package from different, uh, different um, package provider in this case, no? Because uh, Conda is a kind of, uh, have a repository of a specific uh, libraries ready to use. So we can mix both of them by different channel as well. You can create a own channel in your own institution in order to preserve, preserve a specific version of a specific uh, package. So you can add your channel and add to the Conda and say, okay, this is my list or my marketplace of uh, package. And I can use this package from my, my channel, from my own channel. So in order to avoid to use external, not uh, external and, not um, um, good uh, uh, channel without, uh, for instance, auth authorization or whatever. Um, okay, so in this moment, so we can, for instance, if you are doing that, and we can check as well we did with uh, with Python with the Python environment to check what are the the libraries uh, that we install. We can use Conda M export in order to get all the libraries and all the package that we we have for our uh, environment okay so this is a this is the structure of this uh, yml file you can then export to environment.xml sorry yml and you can hear defaults channel all the dependency for the default channel and then you can see what are the the, the pip package that you install with uh, this requirement. So as you can see, you can mix very thing, different things as, as well. You can add packages from different channels. So it's very interesting if you want to preserve different uh, packages in your own infrastructure or in your own cloud service or whatever, okay? Okay, so if uh, we want to continue doing things and to store all the, our history, you can check with uh, long history and you can see what are the latest uh, um, command that we have in the history that manually install, okay? 
So basically, Matplotlib is the last uh, that we start with Mamba because it's not appearing here uh, AstroPy because AstroPy was installed by Pip. Okay. Okay. So in this point, we can use this YML. Sorry, well, yes, YML. But I'm going to create. I'm going to activate. Going to activate. They activate this one. Okay, and I'm going to create this resource file. I'm going to start a new um, environment front end requirement. It's, it's the same that I commented uh, uh, before. I'm not adding here the version, but of course, it's a good practice to have the version here. And as, as you can see here, I think that this is part of the hash. Well, something to I don't know exactly what what this is saying because you can see here the the number of version, and then this is how because basically what is the version of Python, and this is probably is ready to some kind of a hash or something like that to to link the version of the library, the version of the compiler, and the package. Okay. Do that, okay? Yeah, so to, you know, it's a easy way to index this standard. So instead to check the name, the version, so probably take that in, and this is the, the, the ID of the, the package, okay? So let me add uh, this content. Uh, this is uh, environment. I'm going, yes, I added here automated because I'm going to install in this environment by using an, um, an a specific environment with all the dependencies ready. Okay, so I'm going to install. Remember here, when you create this environment, you can add uh, the name of the environment, but if not, you can add uh, the name of the environment inside the environment file. Oh, but it's... No, hmm. yeah, yes, I changed. No oh, wait, um, it's the same error. Sorry. Okay, so it, it's creating directly this environment. This is the environment that we need to reproduce our result. Yeah. You can see here is installing around 200 packets just for four dependencies. <laughs> so, well, but it's working. So, I <laughs> think, yeah. Well, after that, just to it install very well. So, you can check the conda environments. Can see here the new one that I created before. Now I mean, and yeah, we are going to run now a sample just to delete the out the outputs. In my file, so I'm going to delete. Okay, so I'm going to run again with the this Python environment. The room file, as you remember, is that. Okay. Okay, and let's play. What? Okay, good point. It's not working because I didn't activate my environment. So it's perfectly, it's perfect. 
So I'm going to activate this, this environment. Okay, now it's environment ready, and I'm going to execute environment. Okay, execute the run the um, the pipeline, and now we can see the outputs folder populated with the filter image and the mosaic of the image of the horse uh, galaxy. Never like. <laughs> okay, that's fine. In order to remove the containers, the sorry, the container the package just to use this command and remove and the name of the of the of the package of the environment remember that each each uh, yes each content environment depend on the number of uh, package that you have in this case we have a 200 uh, or less 200 uh, package maybe can be around 300 megabytes or uh, so so Okay. Okay, and then in 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 that moment, what is the way to distribute our 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 uh, pipeline? So basically, we just need the environment file, the Python pipeline, and then we have just to include the installation of Mamba with all this requirement, and that's all. So it's working, and all your colleagues that you send this information can be can reproduce this pipeline. Okay. Okay. Question at the moment we got, because we are going to move to the containers part. Some question here in the package manager system. Oh, okay. Yeah, Julian. Question? Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, when you are using Conda, um, if you export, if you export. When, when you are using Conda, if you export an environment and, and you try to import that in a different machine, another computer, someone else, uh, should that uh, work always? Or is there any option that uh, depending on the kind yeah. of installation uh, the other person have, the the import might might fail? Yeah, for instance, good question. I think it's, uh, it's very interesting because if you send to your colleague this uh, the same environment that we created here, here in this architecture. And now this Conda environment is for uh, Intel 74 bits architecture. And you send me to my Mac, probably it's not working because the dependency are not uh, fulfilled. So, but uh, in, I mean the general term, I think that they could be, could work. So could work. in that case, um... Apart from the environment itself, yeah. what do you what should you send to to the people the you the, to... the commands to, to yeah, create to the environment? Yeah, um, it is like yeah. the, the the receipt to create the environment with the different with the different libraries, right? Yeah. yeah. Instead of the exportation with all the dependencies, with right? Yes. Basically, with, yeah. Do, by doing that, you would solve, solve it, right? Yeah, if you want to um, distribute in an easy way without uh, any problems, the idea is to, yeah, basically the, the paste the, the, the installation setup of Conda. So it's basically, if you are using Linux and the other mate is using Linux, it's perfect. So probably no worry, no problem in that, factory, in that aspect. But then distributing your uh, requirements, another way to do that, because you maintain in this environment, you, you fix a specific version, a specific library with the, this hash that commented on me as well. So I think that it's a way to distribute uh, without errors. But of course, it's good, a good question to, <laughs> to say. But in yeah. theory, <laughs> it works. <laughs> I made a mistake, so I know. <laughs> And the next, if it, if it, yes, good question. So if uh, this is not working, you can use container that probably is, <laughs> is working better. No, well, okay, thanks. So yeah, it's, it's a good uh, test uh, just to try in different environment, for instance, different architecture, different computer, different operating system, because if you are trying to use that uh, in Linux, works perfectly, then you move to Windows, probably works perfectly, but yeah, you just, uh, the idea is to, to have a way to standardize uh, this environment 
independently of the, the computing platform. Okay. But of course, you know, depending of the specific things, probably you could be you have, you should, you could be uh, could have problem with that. Okay. Okay. So next part <clears throat> is about uh, containers. Okay, so next uh, part in the in this session is uh, the funny part is the containers. So, well, the installation of containers is uh, is it very. I think it's easy now. It's easy. Ten years ago, no, but now today is very very easy. Um, yeah, the first thing that we are going we are going to do is to to show you what is the way to use. Docker. Docker is a command that you can install. It's a platform, it's a service in your computer. I have installed Docker here. Docker have a lot of command, but it's very, very easy and very friendly because the commands are very well explained and well documented. The first thing that I'm going to, to, to show you is I'm going to execute CASA. Probably you know, it's a radio astronomy uh, super nice software. I'm going to pull this container. In this moment, you can see it's super fast. It's super fast because I yesterday I ate a window. Um, but uh, it's, it's more or less uh, for gigabytes for this image, just to have CASA working with all the components. Mm -hmm. With Docker pool, we can take, we can get a CASA container or containers in general. In this case, I, I have this uh, CAS container ready in, in our in, in, in our repository here in SPSRC. And yes, I have this container ready. You can see here the container, Docker, in order to, to see the Docker. Yeah, you can see here, it's Docker is installed here and we have this image ready. Uh, the image is CASA with the version 6.5. Okay, and this is the size more or less five gigabytes. Do you think that is too much or not for a just casa? Depends, you know. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm going to, the first thing is to pull something, to pull an application, and now I'm going to, to run and to, to use casa directly without dependencies and everything, so. And that's all, so I, I have casa, 6.5 working in my computer, ready to work with uh, all our uh, software pipeline, etc. So, um, yeah, do, you can do that because someone create this image in Docker Hub. And in Docker Hub, you have a lot of tons of uh, 100,000 image for everything. So you have uh, here a lot of, uh, this is my own repository of images. Then I will show you how we can uh, push our uh, pipeline in this repository, in this uh, public repository. For instance, I have a lot of containers ready. You can see here this container. I mean, I have, it's a organization, it's our organization here at, I, at the IAA. We maintain CASA in many different versions. For instance, we produce this container, this container image, this images uh, for our um, scientific staff. Check, yes. Okay. You can see here we can maintain a lot of images ready to use. So for our, and we can use and all our researchers are using this container ready to, to, to execute CASA by using our version of CASA, okay? Yes, let me check. Okay, so in this moment, if you can see, I'm going to the next screen and I'm going to go, I'm exiting from CASA because CASA is now is running in a container. Okay, and that's all. So just to a step, 
to get CASA and to run CASA. Okay. Everything is containerized in one package, in one abstract pack package, because you can say, well, what is the what is the image? What is the file of CASA? What is the binary file? What is the five gigabytes file? Well, it's in a Docker system, so it's not transparent, something that is in your system. This is the difference between singularity. With singularity, you can touch the files. You can see that this is the version of CASA, and the CASA is casa.sif. So you can run directly, and you can copy to another location. You can copy to your colleague. You can share by mail or whatever. OK. So well, we have a lot of uh, comments. So we are just uh, giving, I want to give you just the most important things here. With Docker PS, you can see all the containers that are working in your system. The difference between container and images, images is when you create a big file that contains everything and the, con the image, yes. And the, the container is the instantiation of an image that is something that is running as a service or as an execution. This is the difference. And we have all the, 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 the image here, Docker image. Okay, I have just one image. So, but I can pull other image and all this image will be stored in the, in the registry of, uh, of our matching in this system, okay? And now we are going to create our first uh, image based on our dependencies that we were uh, talking about uh, this uh, or this pipeline. So, in order to create uh, this um, this contain this image, we need a definition file. Definition file is a set of instructions in order to build our container, our image, with all the dependencies, software, environment, data, whatever. Okay. It's very easy to, to, to create a Docker file. You just need uh, to read because uh, it's very important. Mohamed commented this morning the importance to have a, something that you can read and the machine can read. So it's very important. In this case, we have different, let me check because I added here a document just to complete um, a specific part of the definition file. But basically, the first part on the on a Docker file, the Docker file is the, the way to build image from scratch, is to, to say from what is the origin of your, your container, your image, sorry. In this case, I'm going to use Ubuntu 20.04, uh, okay? And then this is the overall step that you probably did when you want to install your system. So you update the package, you install Python, you install pip, you install whatever you get, CURL, or whatever. All the tools that you need in order to have everything ready. Okay. And then we install the, the libraries. So basically, with two different commands, from and run, we can create a minimal uh, setup of container of image. I mean, okay, I'm going to create that. Okay, we are going to do it into a step. The first step is to create a reproducible way, an image of a container in a way that just prepare the environment and then run. And we include in the second in the second version of this, of this file, we are going to include the code of our pipeline inside the container in a way to isolate everything. And okay, this pipeline run and completely in this, uh, fully in this, uh, in this file. Or the first approach is that is to create a kind of uh, bootstrap in order to run all other um, other pipelines that has this uh, package dependency. So two two ways to do that. Okay, the first things I'm going to move here. This is Docker file. Okay. It's very important here, as commented, um, Mohamed commented today, today, to add your man, maintainer, version, license, everything. So in order to, to have uh, all these things in, in the authority, okay. 
Okay, so now it's time to build. Another option, another option that I have here is that this is one, one way to install using apt, apt get, get and as well uh, pip. But the other option is to use, instead to use Ubuntu, we want to, we can use another base distribution like uh, Miniconda, so as uh, compatible, so it's the same. Because our objective is to reproduce our pipeline but this is a kind of black box, so we can read the result, the outputs, and it works with both options. Yes? Just want to uh, imagine uh, using the latest Ubuntu version, because every time you run it, it's a different version. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> point, point. Yes, it is. Yeah, from, yes. <laughs> so you are using the latest. That's perfect, thanks. Manu, can, you, can you repeat what? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very interesting. I commented Mohammed, but uh, this is fixed because I'm using uh, Ubuntu. Okay, Ubuntu in the version is fixed. But in this case, Mohammed commented that we are using always the latest version. So each time that I use that, it's taking a new version. But so I something that we have to take into account. It's not the same. It is the same of okay. So oh, perfect. Thanks. Okay, we are going to build this uh, pipeline, this uh, Docker file. The name that I'm going to do, and I'm going to create is pipeline version one. I'm going to create the image based on this Docker file. Okay. So just the Docker build minus T. T is the tag, is the name that is the tag of the burst. The, the, the image as well the the version or a kind of label and dot just to say that uh, we are going to use this docker file in this folder so by default okay this is created now uh, we have this version we have this uh, container this image ready so i'm going to come check docker pages okay yes you can see here the new image created pipeline v1 okay and we are going to test it yeah with this first version we are going to test uh, just directly the we are going to execute python 3 without our um, uh, pipeline just to check it out so and you can see that if we are importing astropy we have astropy inside our installation in our image. Okay, so we can run in this moment. We are running a Python environment from the container. Okay, so it's working until we are doing things. When I close the container, session is is uh, closed. Okay, so you are freeing all the the resources. Okay. And now we are going in this example, for instance, I'm going to add because this one have a lot of advantages because if I'm doing that, I can use this environment like a virtual environment or from the environment, but using containers. In this moment, if I put Python 3, another pipeline that use AstroPy and NumPy, it works. Okay. But if you want to fit your pipeline in a container in order to create everything in an all-in-one uh, application that you click and run, you have to include your code and your execution in, in this approach, for instance. So I am going to do that. Kind of, yes. To base it the same code, just to yeah, we are doing two things. The first thing is just to create a code uh, folder inside. We use that. In order to, for instance, testing things, when we 
uh, instantiate the container. And then we are creating uh, the output because the idea with that is to move the data that we are producing to our folder, okay, in outside of the container because everything that I'm going to do or everything that you are doing in the container is inside the container. It's like the Vegas, as Vegas. I mean, so <laughs> everything that you are doing here is is inside the container. But if you, in this case, I'm I'm creating this folder to move between the container outputs and my session, and then we have. Uh, we have here I'm going I, I'm pasting the 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 environment sorry the, the pipeline to the code folder just to to execute so okay so in that moment I'm going to create that and it's created and I'm going to uh, no yes sorry I'm checking yes Yes, yeah. And I'm going to build this uh, approach with version two. Okay. Okay. And I have here one image more that contains our pipeline in version two. That, uh, as you can see here, the size is the same because, of course, the code is just a uh, 100 bytes or whatever. Okay, and I'm going to, to run. Okay, I'm going to run. So uh, let me check what happened. Nothing happened. So doing a play, applying filtering, creating something. It's now loading the file. Okay, and now it's, it's on. The result, I want to check that because I want to, to show you one thing. If I run again, the result are not in, in the output file because I'm not connecting this container with my session. Let me check. If I check output, Nothing happened, but it's inside the result are inside the container because if you didn't say about where your result are, he says they will be in in the in the in the container. So in order to avoid this uh, this thing, the regular way to to do that uh, something that is very very common when you use Docker is to to say to Docker, Docker run minus p, and what is the output? Because we connected in the Docker file the output with our output. Okay. And now I'm going to create that, and we are reproducing the same, but directly running the full pipeline in one file. Okay. In one uh, session, yes. In one, yeah. Okay, and now I'm going to check uh, output. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> yes, of course, yes, sorry. It's not working because I delete uh, slash output, but I say here that I want to use my local output, okay? You can see output and hope it works. Yeah, okay. You can see, so you can, if you want to use your result and the output to other folders, you can say, okay, send the, the, my, the outputs to this folder or to this uh, part in my system, okay? Okay, so the last two things here, just to finish this part in, in, in Docker, is what happens if we want this, if you want to share this uh, image to your colleague because they want to they want to reproduce your your um, software pipeline what is the best option here so the best option here is to push 
uh, this uh, pipeline to a public repository like Docker Hub. It's very easy. So I have the login ready. Yeah, I'm logging. And I'm going to, to say that I want to push or to upload my image to a public repository in order to other colleagues can uh, download and, and run. I'm going to, to upload the version two that contains the full pipeline ready to, to execute. Okay. And I'm going to pay, I'm going to push to slash manu barra slash pipeline. That is in my my DID in Docker Hub. So where I have all my projects, all my images ready to use. Okay, this is tag. And now is yes, push. Yes, push. Okay, and now in this moment is pushing to a cloud provider. Okay, and now is the moment that you can share with your colleagues all these uh, these uh, packages in 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 a contact in an image. Okay, so is is uh, is it starting here? Is it uh, updating here? And okay. Meanwhile, I'm going to just to finish the last two the last thing about singularity. It's super, but it's super easy. Once once you you know Docker, singularity is like a, okay, just okay, it's like a, it's for kids. <laughs> I mean, okay, just uh, have a just uh, a few commands. Build is similar that we are doing with the Docker file. Esec to execute something is like a, to uh, run a container like a binary. Inspect to see different things. Pool is something that do, I want now. A colleague want to pull uh, do, or download download a, a container. Just pull. The good thing here is the uh, is that the uh, singularity can is compatible with uh, all Docker images. You can uh, move image from Docker to singularity, singularity to Docker, etc. So it's good if you have something developed in singularity, you can use in Docker, etc. And, and run, so just to uh, run your image. And shell if you want to go, go into the, the image. As well as uh, Docker Hub, uh, Docker Hub has um, a marketplace of, sorry, Singularity have a have a of image. The format of image is SIF, S I if, F, sorry, yes. And yeah, and are compatible. Okay, just to, okay, in this moment, as you can see here, the image is ready. It's now you can, if you can check docker half slash manuparra slash, uh, you can see this container, you can pull and you can directly start playing with, and you can see as well the fits file with the horse uh, galaxy. And yes, I just to one minute finish. I'm going just to test uh, two things. Singularity is very easy, just pulling an image is compatible with Docker. In this case, it's pulling one image of a, a cow, say something. Say something, something very serious. <laughs> The first step is just a pool. The pool is the one that's creating the SIF file in your, your local space. So you can see the SIF here. And then I'm going to, to execute. So it's run. So just pull and run. This is the overall workflow with containers here. Okay. So as you can see that this is running. And yeah, just to, to finish, uh, commented that the next part is the same that we did for Docker to create the same definition file, but in the format of uh, singularity with uh, dot def, and to use the same. So you can use this one. Um, I think that uh, that's all. And remember that we I added here the best 
practice for all this thing that you use you we did uh, we we talked today and okay uh, that's all so I, I mean if you want to ask something or and um, open the question thank you Manu. thank you Manu. Does anybody on Zoom or in person have any questions? Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, just a small comment. Uh, almost one and a half years ago, um, uh, Singularity was renamed to Aptainer. Obtainer, yeah. Yes, it's now called uh, Aptainer. And the, and the good advantage compared to Docker is that, uh, just to build upon your point, is that it doesn't need root permissions. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, have, I have a one in the documentation. It's so long, it's not too long, but uh, you can see that you can build something. Uh, so you can play with uh, without yeah. uh, being root. But uh, just one thing is that you need to be root to build image. To build, yes. Yeah, so you can build in your own laptop and then exactly. push your image or copy your image in the HPC computer exactly. as a user, and it works. Yeah. But uh, yes, this is very interesting. So th thanks for commenting. Thank yeah. I was going to reiterate that as well. So um, yeah, thank you so much for demonstrating both. So Docker is really useful on your own laptop. Singularity you need when you're pushing elsewhere yeah. that you don't have root or pseudo. Um, has anybody used containers before as part of their work? Yeah. 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 Have you experienced any particular challenges or has it been relatively useful for you? Maybe at the beginning, it's difficult to install it and get it all running, but the documentation, I think it's pretty nice. And yeah. once you, you get used to it, it's pretty useful. Yeah, yeah great. And yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, what I found very difficult um, setting up Docker in my laptop, laptop. Um, is the graphic user interface. It took me like... <laughs> like two days to figure it out. Uh, another, I, I remember uh, while I was in South Africa, the one of the, um, of the clusters there, well, well all of the clusters yes. actually, they used uh, Docker and somehow the, it got hacked. So, and they say that uh, Docker is not safe and they switch to singularity. Do you, do you have any comment on that? Yeah, uh, good question, good, good point. Uh, in the, the coffee break, Susanna and other colleagues were talking about the, the vulnerabilities of Docker. It's something that you have to take into account because when you deliver this uh, pipeline, for instance, it depends on many packages. NumPy, so in this version is working, not vulnerabilities of security, but in the next three years, Probably you have a some problem or an issue, so and you have to reveal your software with the latest version, and probably you have to you have problems with the, the version, the, the current version, instead to the, the other. So, Docker is something that uh, you have to take into account the security issues, uh, as well if you are showing services uh, on top of your of your service of your user, uh, exposing ports or something like that, because it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a problem. Uh, I know that uh, many of uh, the tools now, for instance, I you can I can see they have a lot, in the best practice I, I have a lot of uh, things well different different things to comment. But for instance, tool like that, Harbor, Harbor is a is a container or image um, marketplace or hub in order to install in your own infrastructure or con your containers like uh, Docker Docker Hub, but in your own infrastructure. Harbor can have um, an, a specific module uh, to check vulnerabilities. For instance, if you are pushing this container, this uh, new image of this pipeline, Harbor can check if uh, your dependency of your container, or, because it's tried to run the container and check in real time, what are the vulnerabilities that, uh, that, that uh, your package and your image have in order to, okay, this, 
container or this image or this container running or this image in this case have these vulnerabilities related to this 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 which this uh, um, package. So, but it's necessary to have this one. Probably most of the organization don't have uh, these uh, things, but uh, I think that is a good practice to take into account the the, the security in this uh, at the, the Docker level. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah.